Randy, I don't know if every Olympic marathon has a villain. <laughs> But the 1904 Men's Olympic Marathon sure has a villain. We don't know how to fill time on a podcast yet, so here's Randy talking about the movie Cool Runnings. Podcasts don't get better again than, hey, I saw it on the internet. All right, so then after that, um, we have a ridiculous introduction. Ridiculous introduction. Well, you have to have ideas. This is really hard. It is hard. That's, I think that's it. I, I think we got it. I think we <laughs> use that and roll with it. Hello, everybody. This is Hey, I Saw That on the Internet with me, Bradley. <laughs> this is me. Oh, no last name. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Try that one again. So I can... <laughs> no, absolutely not. We're, we're rolling with it. Bradley, it's gotta be live. All right, Randy, I, I, when we did this, I said I would never do a second take ever. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's... That's my strategy. We're going with first right. takes every time. Uh, I'm Randy. I almost said my last name. I had to catch myself there. You can say if you want. I mean, mine's in there they now. Might, they might get out eventually. <laughs> yeah. But uh, mm. for now, mm. it's just Bradley and Randy. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. If you can beep out my last name, then I don't want to be the only one with the last name. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, so, Bradley, what did you see on the internet this week? Oh, what I saw on the internet. Uh, this is um, possibly... My favorite Wikipedia page of all time. Okay. If not, it's definitely in the running. That's going to make more sense when you know what it actually it is. It's it's an Olympic marathon. <laughs> is that it's, like a, a, a pun to the? Yeah, it's a pun to something you don't know about. It's if you had it's a pun without the part that makes it a pun where it's wordplay. It's just <laughs> it's just the 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 words. That's like so. That, that's like pun inception or something. Mm-hmm. It's like the well. You know, well, it's more like not actually making a joke that makes sense. It's like an inside joke with just yourself. It's like a non-joke. What, yeah. what are they, an anti-joke. Yes. That was a thing back in the day. No. Well, yeah, but this is like a joke, you know, that nobody else is in on but me. It's, a, it's mm. the most inside joke ever where I just made myself laugh. Anyway, the article on Wikipedia that I'm going to be talking about today is Athletics at the 1904 Summer Olympics Men's Marathon. I'm going to need you to say that one more time. (laughs) (laughs) Athletics at the 1904 Summer Olympics Men's Marathon. I feel like we can fill up a lot of content if you just make me repeat everything. (laughs) It's a great way to do it. Um, Yeah, this is is an interesting one. This is, I mean, it's definitely my favorite marathon of all time. That goes without saying. How many other marathons do you know? Uh... You know, <laughs> what didn't a guy run 26 miles in Greece and die back in the day? I think that's that was uh, to the Battle of Marathon. I, yeah, okay. I'm like half remembering something from my college history class. I, I think the only other marathon I know is the Boston one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a particular men's uh, marathon. I don't. I didn't tell you anything going into this. I asked you, hey, do you know anything about historic men's marathons? Mm-hmm. You said no. That's I know nothing. All the background you had going into this. Mm-hmm. Um, this one in particular is uh, like, it's, yeah. I'm just gonna get into it. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna set. But I'm gonna set the stage for you. Took place St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. It was the third ever Olympic marathon in like the modern tradition of Olympic marathons. Okay. Olympic events. Um, it was 28, 24.85 miles long. Okay. Which isn't like a goof or anything. They just like they hadn't standardized marathons back sure. in the day. Okay. They just, you had a long race. They were race, still figuring it out. You'd call it a marathon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't know what they were going to do. So I'm going to take you through like some background on it, some characters. We're going to meet our first character now. Randy, I don't know if, um, every Olympic marathon has a villain, <laughs> but the 1904 men's Olympic marathon sure has a villain. A fellow by the name of James E. Sullivan. He was one of the chief organizers for the event. Um, so when you're organizing a race, obviously the safety of uh, you know the race, the participants, that's like your main concern, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, James E. Sullivan used this as a research experiment into quote purposeful dehydration. End quote. Oh. So. Uh, yeah. Again, this is Missouri. Like you've been in the Midwest long enough. You know that like 
our summers they get hot, they get humid, like, humid so yeah. like sweat doesn't evaporate off you, yeah. it doesn't pull heat away, it just kind of sits on you. Wait, some places so, like your sweat just evaporates? Yeah, like if you go to like out west where it's dry, it, like sweat will like it doesn't like stick to you as much and like actually pull because that's the whole point of sweat is that water beads up on your skin, yeah. it evaporates and it pulls the heat away from your body. Yeah, by evaporating. I just but figured it, that, like, everywhere it was just, like, gross no, and stayed like, on. not. It's, like, I mean, you know, wow. everywhere you get a little gross from sweat, I'm sure. Yeah. But, like, no. Like, that's interesting. That's a, like, you know, Midwest is, like, air soup. That's why California gets hot, but it's not, like. It's a dry heat. Yeah, it's a dry heat. That's why they say that, because it really does feel different, because your sweat actually takes heat away from you. That's interesting. Anyway, you're getting off topic. I am. I don't appreciate that on our very <laughs> first topic you can't even i think that's gonna be the general point of the show no i i think that we're gonna be very linear (laughs) and that's 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 gonna be our aim okay um so james e sullivan was chief organizer wanted to wanted to research purposeful dehydration um oh so just to be clear he was not a runner in this no he was he was one of the organizers and he wanted to see what would happen if he intentionally like he wanted to see the effects on the human body of like making people incredibly dehydrated got it okay okay so to do this uh he used a lot of tactics one it's in st louis so i'm i didn't see anything about the humidity i assume it's pretty humid yeah right? i went to school up there it's mm-hmm. like pretty similar to here yeah right so it gets pretty humid in the summer uh so he picked he decided to start it at 3 p.m Ew. uh at the heat of the day the hottest part of the day 90 degrees fahrenheit Ew. yep so everybody's running in 90 degrees fahrenheit and this course was set uh, I think the first few laps were like around the stadium, like the Olympic okay. stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then after that, all of it was on dirt roads. Oh, sheesh. So again, 24.85 miles, uh, most of it along dirt roads, official cars would drive on the road ahead of the like participants to like make sure they're doing okay, which would kick up clouds of dust that they would have to <laughs> breathe in. <laughs> Uh, William Garcia was uh, an entrant into the race. He was uh, he was just found on the side of the road with severe internal injuries from breathing in clouds of dust. Oh my goodness! Yep. So he uh, yeah he didn't he didn't finish. Uh, a lot of people didn't finish, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah. As far as water sources, I there were only two on the twenty four point eight five mile race. Uh, there was a water tower at mile six. And there was a well at mile 12. So like not even like publicly. Not even halfway through. I don't know if these were intended water stops or not. Oh it's not clear. Goodness. There's just two places you could have gotten water if you really wanted water. And that was mile six, mile 12. That was about it. Uh, yeah. So mile six, mile 12, all along dirt roads. Yeah. Uh, also, they didn't clear the roads. Like they didn't like go through, clean up the, like if there was stuff in the Junk, road, yeah. like the rocks in the road, you just had to not trip on the rocks. And when I say they didn't clear the roads, I mean, they didn't like reserve the roads. People were just running next to cars. Oh like, my goodness. Traffic pedestrians, people walking dogs. But was that like a thing of the time though? Of like, I wonder if anyone had done that yet. Like stop I traffic for a marathon. No, but I know it, didn't help in this particular one. I think that they did because it did get like specifically called out that like they did not. Oh, that's interesting. So I'm not a hundred percent sure, but to me, it seems as though they just let them like, let them go without like telling the town around them. Oh my goodness. Go there. Again, not a hundred percent sure. So those were the conditions of the race. Purposeful dehydration, a uh, 90 degree day, humid outside, Two water stops. Uh, again, the second, the well was the last water stop. Mm-hmm. That was 12 miles into a 24.85 mile like race. Way. Not oh even halfway. And again, keep in mind, like the first part of it wasn't along dirt roads. I, so like, yeah, most of the, most of the being along dirt roads out of the 32 entrants. How many do you think finished the race? 32 entrants. I'm mm-hmm. going to say like two. 14. So Four, okay. You know, That's so, better than like, I thought. It's better than you thought, yeah. but still that is the uh, worst ratio of entrance to finishers in the history of the uh, Olympic marathon. Wow. Probably in the history. Cause you got to consider like these are marathon Olympic ready athletes. athletes. Yeah. Like they're, you're not running your first ever marathon at the Olympics. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's 
you've prepared. Like, you've come in ready. But, I mean, like, there's the whole thing of, like, the, the, the bobsled team. Where, where were they from? Was it Jamaica? The yeah, Jamaica is, are, bobsled are you team? just about to summarize the plot of Cool Runnings? <laughs> <laughs> is that... Is that what we're going to do? We don't know how to fill time on a podcast yet, so here's Randy talking about the movie Cool Runnings. <laughs> no, you're like, well, if, if, if you don't show up to the Olympics never having run a marathon. I mean, like, yeah, Cool Runnings showed up to the... for it. They didn't just show up. They're not like, hey, wait, they have bobsleds here? Maybe we'll try that out. That's... <laughs> but it's kind of what they did. They're like, all right, we'll train for the. They, they trained like they like they knew what the sport was. <laughs> uh, oh my god! Maybe we'll watch Cool Runnings after this because obviously <laughs> one of us doesn't know the plot, and I'm not I confident. I'm not confident that it's not me, Randy. Like, don't <laughs> don't worry. You might be right. I mean, it might be like Bradley's an idiot. He knows nothing about the film Cool Runnings. The next one we'll watch is a. Uh... Oh shoot! What's that fat fat camp one? Uh, <laughs> oh oh! I know the one you're talking. Um, about. Is it Bill Murray in it? I can't oh, oh, I'm oh. terrible with actors. It, audience, if you guys know the movie about a fat camp, let us know. It's a Disney uh, movie. Yeah. Um, I I know what you're talking about, and I'm gonna be like in the middle of something else here, and just be at work tomorrow and be like, it's yeah. yeah. So okay. Well, Randy, we uh we've set the stage here. We've gone through everything. About like what the Olympics, like what was going on at the mm-hmm, Olympics. Mm-hmm. Do you want to get into the uh, participants, the, the the few notable entrants into the race? I got, like the, got like a the few people? Yeah, yeah. Let's like do we're it. We're going to talk about some actual people in the race. Yeah. The first person that we're going to talk about is Fred Lors. Okay. Fred Lors. Fred Lors. Yep. Okay. The reason we're going to talk about him first was because he was the first one to finish. Now, remember, okay. everything that I tell you, probably, well, without a doubt, the worst Olympic marathon conditions in yeah. history going on behind him, right? Okay, so he finished in three hours and 13 minutes, which that's the slowest time to ever be given to the like the winner of the Olympics is three hours, 13 minutes. Jeez. That's, what he, that's when he finished. Uh, upon finishing the race, holding a glass of water this whole time. <laughs> Just adds to the, the yeah. ambiance. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes me look sophisticated. I think I had my pinky out. I don't know. Maybe. Um, so Fred Lors, three hours, 13 minutes, finishes the race, takes a pre- uh, picture with the president's daughter, Alice Roosevelt, daughter of Theodore Roosevelt, mm-hmm. president at the time. Um, he went to receive his gold medal and the uh, spectators watching were like, hey, he, he can't, you can't. Like, is he seriously, he, he cheated. I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, what do you mean he cheated? And they're like, well, turns out Fred Lors dropped out of the race after nine miles, got into an official vehicle to ride back to the track. And that car broke down at mile 19 and he just finished the race. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was the first person oh to finish the race. They, uh, they banned him for life, but then they brought it down to a year because he was like, was, this is like the original, just a prank, bro. <laughs> like, he was like, I never intended. Like, I have to believe that this guy never intended to like walk away with the gold medal because he rode in an official vehicle yeah. part way back. So like he knew he was going to get caught. Like, I yeah. think he did it as a joke. And that's what he said. He, he said he never intended to, they, reduced this band down to a year. Uh, but yeah, the first guy to finish just rode in a car for 10 miles of the race. <laughs> Did he count towards one of the, um, you know, one of the finishers? Finished? No, no, I do okay. not think so. No, he was not an official finisher. Cause yeah, they said that he, he was like, apparently going to like reveal it the whole time. I literally wrote down in my notes, just a prank, bro. <laughs> just a prank, bro. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that was, that was the first person across the finish line. Okay. So he obviously was disqualified. Mm-hmm. The second person across the finish line was not disqualified. He okay. was the guy that actually won the race, took home the gold medal. But if this race were run today, he would have been disqualified. Interesting. Okay. How so? So, how, well, what do you think that means? What do you think would have somebody, been disqualified? Yeah. What do you think like somebody could have done? No, not being too slow. Like, what could something that somebody could have done 
in the Olympics in 1904 that would have gotten them disqualified? I'm just genu- genuinely curious how you'd answer this question. What is something in 1904 that was permissible by the Olympic Committee that would not be permissible by the Olympic Committee today? Um, maybe he cut a corner. No, and like missed a leg of the track. No, that's a good. That's a good guess. Not not quite. Um, did he like beat up one of the other runners? No, that's not. <laughs> That was not something that, uh, yeah, I don't know that I don't know if they would have allowed that then or mm, not. Okay. But no, I'll give you one more guess um, and we'll get into it. Did he <clears throat> take a car? <laughs> <laughs> no, believe it or not, that's not. I did not allow it for the first guy. It's all the second guy doing. It. Like, well, if everybody's doing it, sorry, well. but yeah. No, uh, the the thing I was hoping you'd guess was substances because that seems like oh yeah that seems like something where like in yeah I don't do a lot of those they're just not in no. my mind. Well, I mean you do PEDs right? Like that's the whole what are you gonna yeah. go with that? <laughs> <laughs> Performance enhancing drugs, Randy, oh. <laughs> right? So like I was like what I was hoping was uh, you know you'd guess some kind of PED, some kind of performance enhancing drug, maybe even cocaine. Like you know they didn't know how. Like, you know, they sure. might have, you know, back in the day, wasn't as known to be bad for you. I don't know when we figured that out, but I mean, I'm glad we did. Um, cigarettes were probably still good for you at that point. Yeah, they were probably smoking them as they ran back in the... <laughs> like, it this was probably very so common. much yeah. with my lymphoma. Probably took smoke break. Okay, well, um, yeah, so it was. It was uh, a performance-enhancing drug, uh, and it was not cocaine, Um I, I don't think you would guess what the performance enhancing drug was. Uh, it was strychnine. I would not have gotten that. No. Do you know what strychnine is? Um, I'm going to take a guess mm-hmm. and say, is it like angel dust? It is literal rat poison, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> How does that enhance? That's, that, it's like a, it was a commonly known thing at the time that you could use strychnine as a performance enhancing drug. He was about 14 miles into the race. He was winning the race. And his, he was like, I can't do this anymore for very obvious reasons. So his trainers started feeding him a mixture of egg whites, brandy, and strychnine. Oh my. So he was taking this to like keep him in the race. Randy, he was literally hallucinating while he ran the race. What an Olympics. Yeah. Uh, so obviously like he almost quit after 14 miles. He kept going because they gave him this mixture. Um, during the course of the race, he lost eight pounds. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the normal amount of weight. Holy I assume cow. there's some weight loss just from sweat and all that, but no, he lost eight pounds during the, the course of the race. That's also not the only reason he would have been disqualified because, uh, at the finish line, his trainers were literally holding him in the air as he shuffled his feet on the ground. <laughs> just to kind of like make it look like he was still running. It's like a little marionette. Yeah, he's just like like just shuffling back and forth like, uh, no, I'm still going. Um, yeah, he immediately oh had to be goodness. treated by a team of, team of medics like upon finishing the race for very obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. So that's this, this checks out for mm-hmm. St. Louis though. Yeah. Like, that, <laughs> Well, I mean, it's the Olympics. They come from all over. It's not like he was like, oh, he's he's nearby. We'll let him in. Like this. I don't know. I these... think St. Louis has an effect on people. I'm gonna yeah. be real. Maybe, maybe being there. Maybe yeah, seeing the arch or something. Yeah, out of there. All I right. See you. I'm gonna I'm gonna straighten up. I'm gonna adjust my shirt. I uh, we have more entrance to talk about. <laughs> so. Next up, we have by far my favorite of all the entrance. This um, is better than the last one. Yes, this is this is much better. Sheesh. Um, this guy is he's one of my favorite athletes of all time. Without a doubt. This man was from Cuba. Okay. He worked as a postman. His name, you're going to have to give me some leeway on the pronunciation. Yeah, he's I'm from mi- Cuba. I, I might have seen like a video on this topic a few years back, but I I don't know how to pronounce his name off the top of my head. I can barely it. pronounce my own name. Yes. I'm, like... <laughs> I'm not going to tell you yet whether or not this guy finished or not. Okay. This was a Cuban postman. Man, I, I'm going to take a guess on the pronunciation of his name. Uh, Andorine Carvajal. Sure. I yeah, I'll, I'll take yeah. it. So, Andreen Carvajal. Um, so, his story actually starts before the race. Okay. Because the day before the race. Oh, whole day before. He lost all of his money gambling in New Orleans. He showed up to the race without anything. 
He was wearing street clothes that he cut off at the knee to turn into shorts. Oh, man. Yep. He hitchhiked from New Orleans, Louisiana to St. Louis, Missouri to be there for the race. I'm not quite sure if it was the day before or two days before, but he had just lost all his money gambling, hitchhikes to get to the race, cuts off his shorts, enters the race. Holy cow. Yeah. That's like one Uh, of those things that can never happen today mm because no one trusts the pickup hitchhikers. That's Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But him, like, you know, he had to get to the Olympics. It was the only way. Wow. 1904. Yeah, you can't take an Uber in 1904. Yeah, you just... I mean, even if he... If he could, he didn't have any money. He lost it all gambling the night before, Randy. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, he had not eaten in 40 hours at the time of the race. So, okay. yeah. So, he sees a spectator while he's running the race. Spectator has two peaches in his hand. So, Andorine walks up to the man, asks him if he can have those peaches. The man says that he cannot. So, Andorine steals the peaches and runs away. What are you going to do? Catch him? Yeah, he's an Olympic <laughs> marathonist. He's obviously pretty fast. So that Wait, wasn't... You know what probably makes this better? What's that? Does does he speak English? Like, do people in Cuba speak I English? Am, I, honestly, I'm not sure. He might, he he might, might have not. just been like... Yeah. Peaches. I, he might have been gesturing for peaches. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I don't know. What? And then just steals his peaches? Uh, maybe. Like, I, I want to <laughs> imagine that's how this, this interaction goes. Is he's like, mm, ah, mm, and just takes them, you know, like it's grunting very noises. Very possible. I <laughs> that could be it. Just dashes out on his way and just keeps going. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I don't know, but I do know that was not the only thing that Andreen Carnival, Carvajal, Carnival, mm-hmm. Andrew, Carnival. <laughs> I was actually maybe going to talk about Carnival this week, but mm. we'll keep we'll keep going. Be a, that was not. <laughs> But I was in the middle of saying with a smooth segue that we completely turned into not a smooth segue <laughs> was that, that the peaches were not the only thing that Andereen Carnival. I did it again. The peaches were not the only thing that Andereen Carvajal ate while he was running the race. Okay. Is it more rat poison? <laughs> I'm glad I swallowed the water before you said that. No, it was not more rat poison. The thing that he ate during the race were uh, apples. Okay. That he got from an orchard. <laughs> they ran past an orchard. He went off, got some apples, and ate them. <laughs> Turned out the apples were rotten. Ew. So during the race, he got sick. He laid down and took a nap <laughs> because he had stomach cramps. Randy, he finished fourth. (laughs) I'm just imagining, like, the car is, like, leading people to make sure they're safe. Dudes are coughing left and right, like, oh, I'm getting gravel in my lungs, dude. And this guy's like, oh, my tum-tum hurt. I'm going to take a nap now. (laughs) Laying there like, oh, like he wakes up at the car. He's like, oh, hey, how y'all doing? Yeah. And then like, could you imagine getting passed by that guy? Like a guy in street clothes cut off of the shorts that you just saw taking a nap a few miles back and he just <laughs> runs past you. Yeah. Like, he's stolen. Like imagine being the guy that saw all of this take place. You're struggling oh to goodness. breathe. You're, you're William Garcia passed out on the side of the road as this guy just darts past you. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> That's hilarious. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, he finished fourth. That was the fourth place finisher. Which, again, you got to imagine, had he not taken a literal nap during the race, he probably would have finished better. You know what? He's not the only one with a disappointing finish. I only have two more entrants to talk about. Okay. Uh, this next section, I literally wrote down word for word as it sits in Wikipedia. Okay. Uh, I don't think I can present this um, any better. Yeah, I, it's just, as this is, the sentence, I don't think I could make any better comedic timing for it. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to, again, ask for some leeway in pronunciation because uh, this these are uh, two South African candidates. I don't I don't know how to say this. Yeah. So I, I don't know how to say their names exactly. Fair. Okay. <clears throat> the South African entrants, Lynn Tonyan and John Mashiani, finished ninth and 12th respectively. This was a disappointment 
as many observers were sure Tonyane could have done better if he had not been chased nearly a mile off course by wild dogs. <laughs> The 1904 Men's Olympic Marathon. <laughs> All right. You hey, hey, me? Randy. Here. Did what I, did you I, see on the internet this week? Bradley, I saw... I have to give you a... I have to give you a preface to what I saw on the internet this week. Um, mine is not so much talking about... This time, what I saw on the internet, but mm-hmm. it's something I saw on the internet that sparked me to think about other things. That's good. Um, was it was it about people not minding the space that we're recording? I'm kidding. <laughs> throwing around everything upstairs? Yeah, was it about destruction of furniture? Is that what... Uh, no. So, I saw a TikTok. It's not stopped. Um, you probably want to wait. <laughs> I might, but... Oh, oh well. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I saw a TikTok this week um, of a guy who was complaining that kids today don't have anywhere to like hang out. Like, there's no mm. designated like, oh yeah, go to the arcade yeah, no after mall. school, hang out in the mall. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, there's I still... watch Stranger Things. I'm familiar with the concept of you know. of of hanging out with yeah. other humans. Right. Bowling alleys, I think, were big when I was young, but yeah, I wouldn't trust a kid. I wouldn't let my kid go into a bowling alley. Yeah, if I had like a that's kind of like the the I don't know the double edged sword of like um, kids don't have anywhere to be, but anywhere you want to be as a kid might not be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> this got me thinking. So I came up with, I believe it's a list of five things, five topics mm-hmm. on how to genuinely reform America. Ooh, what? Hold, hold on. What? How did you got? How did you get there from kids not having a place to hang out? I was like, oh, like, no, oh, we're gonna come up with with spots for kids to hang out. No, well, it's, we're it's, gonna fix the country. It's one of the topics. Can, can we do the actual topic that you say like presented? Can we do that another time? I understand you prepared something else for today, but like what you just said sounds interesting. No, it's it's one of my topics. It's it's in the list of five. What? Sorry. Yeah. Hold on. So, <laughs> I didn't I didn't understand what you just said to me. Okay, so the having kids having a place to hang out yeah. is in the list of top five things we need to reform about this country. Okay. It's in the list. Okay. Gotcha. So Ooh. sorry, Sp- some spoilers. I, yeah, spoiler. You know what would have been great? If you connected those ideas before <laughs> we started talking about it. No, no, I got an order. I, I in mean, my brain, like it just works this way. It can't be just like later I'm like Oh, the pieces are coming together. <laughs> what is this non-sequential <laughs> storytelling that Randy has going? Oh my gosh. I, it's, it's just the way it is. All right. All it's right. the way it is. Okay. Right, what we got? My, my, I think this is the biggest one on the list. So kind of like, spo- spoiler alert, it's the best one. Mm-hmm. Um, doctors should be required. Okay. Let me, let me back up. You know how uh, like inmates in prisons... We'll get tear teardrop tattoos when they kill somebody. Oh yeah, yeah. Doctors oh, yeah. should also be required to get teardrop tattoos when they kill their patients. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like that you said also be required. Like that's a requirement for inmates. Like they're like, ah, Tommy, kill another guy. Let's put his teardrop tattoo on him. Send him on his way. Stick and poke. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that that's mandatory, Randy. I think that they, I think that's a oh choice. My yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, what I like where I thought you were going with this too. I thought you were like, oh, they they got to get like a little red cross for every person they save. So you can, I mean, like at least give them that, like it was some kind of counterbalance, so like their face is like. <laughs> Like black teardrops on this side and like red teardrops on this. I feel like this is like a sci-fi novel where like your your tattoos denote your rank in some that weird future be, society. Yeah, that could be a thing. Mm. Um. Anyway, I thought this would impact society in a couple of ways. Like, <laughs> you know, you go to the doctor's office and it's your first time meeting your new doctor, and then they walk in and they're just like all tatted up in the face with teardrops, and you're like, 
I love I love the idea oh, that a family doctor, like a general medical <laughs> practitioner, like I, oh, I'm at I'm at an, uh, an RN and uh, yeah, just covered in tattoos. Like my optometrist, man, he just had, had teardrop <laughs> tattoos all over him. Dude, but you know, you would know how good your doctor. Well, yeah, you wouldn't really know how good they are. You just you just know that they haven't done enough to. <laughs> you, you go to your dentist and they have a teardrop tattoo. You. Uh, what happened here? <laughs> the other thought I had was it probably would revolutionize the tattoo industry. They'd yeah. have to move closer to hospitals. You know, like they'd need a yeah, part. Like, true. Well, think I of mean, the bigger hospitals. I, I assume probably, they would do that in house. Like, yeah. It's like, you know, you would have like a, a staff. Well, I don't think that, that many, member? I don't think that many doctors are directly responsible for killing patients. Also, none of this yeah, is to probably. say, that um, you, you you generally get your medical license taken away if you, if it's <laughs> known that you kill somebody like if it's like oh <laughs> your, your failings led to this man's well, death. I mean, don't we have like a shortage of doctors and nurses though? Like, so you want to take them down? You want to get rid of the battle? You want to prune? Is that no, no? I want to keep them. <laughs> we got a shortage of doctors. How will this Just... help retention? They're like, cheaper. Like, so your insurance just will know rip if you mess. <laughs> if, if we make them less employable in other fields, but isn't that kind of a, the, the? How funny would it be that like you if you got some like bottom tier insurance, <laughs> like you can only go to doctors. A bad track record. <laughs> doctors with borders, and the borders are the walls doctors of the prison. With borders. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. This is certainly an interesting concept. Oh. Um, so I'm sorry. Is this list? Is this list ordered? Is this? Is that your number one way to fix America? Or are these, yeah. are these all different? <laughs> Health okay. yeah. Healthcare. Your idea of healthcare reform is if you kill a patient, you have to get a You get it. cheaper rates. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how that works already. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I mean, I would assume like a shoddy doctor and like, I don't know, maybe. I don't like price my medical care. I just like, I mean, I, I don't really go to the doctor unless it's like an emergency anyway. So oh, I'm just like. Same. Uh, but I don't know. Expensive. I mean, I would assume the, like, you know, like the top care in the country is going to cost more. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, so I'd assume that, you know, Randy, this is already in place. That's what I'm telling you. Just without the <laughs> I mean, well, it might yeah. be. All right. Um, number two. Number two. Number two. Mandatory. Like, okay, let, let, me, let me back up. So, you know how, like, South Korea, uh, let, mandatory military service? Yeah. So, like, they have to serve from, like, I think, I think it's two years. I could be wrong mm-hmm. about that. But I think it's that to serve two years um, between yeah. some age and Wasn't range. Wasn't that uh, the, like the Swiss Army, too? Has to... I, that could be. I know there's compulsory service in like yeah, places yeah. in Europe. Yeah, a bunch of other countries. Um, so, same idea, but mandatory fast food or retail service for every single person in America. <laughs> Okay, so like you have to spend two years in retail yeah. when you get out of school or whatever. And hear me yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Somehow no, we rank them so like the worst jobs go to the wealthiest kids. Ooh. Okay. I so I'm, so like, what what is the worst retail job? Um, I can only imagine Dollar General must be like because I just top of tier. Bad job. I just imagine that, like, see, I disagree because I don't think people care. Like, I think you mess up a Dollar you General. Think so? I think if you mess up a Dollar General, people will just be like, whatever. Well, like, I guess I, I'm thinking. Of, I'm thinking of as like the people you have to deal with. Yeah, the customers don't care at Dollar okay, General. Like, okay. the bad ones stole stuff. And he, like, when I worked at uh, when I worked retail, they told me like, hey, you are not allowed to like confront people about stealing. Oh, yeah, You're yeah. not allowed to like confront customers i can't imagine that people at dollar general are like i mean like the, all the dollar general and people out there are gonna be like no that's dollar absolutely general terrible. diehards like, no no i mean like the people that work there are gonna like have awful experiences but like 
I don't know if it's any, I don't know if it's like, you know, I imagine there's a ton of bad experiences on retail. I don't imagine oh, yeah. dollar general is, is worse. Um, because of, you know, anything yeah. about, I mean, I imagine like, let me think, cause there's gotta be like, there's gotta be stuff where people are just like mad at you all day in retail. And I don't feel like dollar general, I don't think your customers, I think they're just mostly coming in buying bread and leaving and, Okay. If not, you know, it's pretty low stress on you. I imagine that something like, like, I imagine that there's a lot of places. Let me think because. So I'm going to tell you, I used to work at a Target. Okay. That was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, And it wasn't like the, it was interesting because there's like those Target diehards. Hmm. They were, they were generally fine. Because they were like they are they were bought into Target. They like had the mm-hmm. app, and they had the red card, and they're like, "I'm saving my five percent, and I got all my coupons, scan my code, and I bought all my bags. So take five cents off for each bag mm-hmm. I brought." They those people were fine. Sometimes a little annoying, <clears throat> but the worst people were like the people who were trying to constantly save a buck. I had so when I was there, it was like the second to last week working there. It was a back to school sale and they were selling binders. There was this big sale on binders and there were like the nice like cloth binders. Mm-hmm. You've seen those where like they zip up sure. and everything. Yeah. And they have all the trapper. <clears throat> those are the thing? No, trapper I, I keepers were like plastic, I think. So. I can't remember. But um, anyway. We were it was, born in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> it was those like cloth binders that mm-hmm. were really nice. I know another kind you're talking um, about. And this guy is just loads up a cart with them. And I'm like, oh, whatever. Like, cool. Buying mm-hmm. all these cloth binders. And the, but the biggest sale happening was with those like really dinky ones that were just like, you know, they're one solid oh, yeah, yeah. color, like, they're like made cardboard. Like, you fold like them open. Even cardboard. They like fall apart like halfway board. through the school yeah. year. Yeah. 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 Those dude thinks that the price for those is the price for the cloth ones. <laughs> so it was okay. like 10 for like, five dollars or whatever yeah so dude rings start ringing up all these oh, oh he thought the price for the the cloth ones he saw the price for the the plastic ones and it, it was really yes he, he thought it was the price for the the, the, cloth, the ones. cloth ones okay so gotcha. like he thinks that like they're 50 cents each or whatever and i'm scanning i'm scanning i'm scanning he isn't stopping me but he's staring at the number for all of them <laughs> like as they go across he's like watching Waiting it for it to like tick like, down yeah all right that rang up for thirty four ninety nine. I can't wait to get it for fifty cents. <laughs> and like, tell him his total because he had this like yeah. this shopping cart full. And I'm like, all right, your total is gonna be like it's like three hundred something something. He's like, oh no 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 that <laughs> that is not right. And I'm like, uh, well, I mean they're they're a little off, but like like this kind of but mm-hmm. like I mean there's still that. And he's like, no, they should be. Ten for five dollars, and I'm like, oh no no no! So like when mm-hmm. I was working there, they gave you this magazine, and it would be of all the sales happening. And I had someone come to the line earlier that day who got the same sale. Yeah. I was talking about it. They were like a school teacher sure. or something. So I pulled the magazine and I showed him what he was actually actually trying looking to, yeah, for yeah, and thought he was, was. getting. Yeah, yeah. And then he got butt hurt to no end. And he called, he's like, I need to speak to your manager right now. So I flip my little light on. There's a little light in the top yeah. that like shines blue that from call my yeah, manager yeah, yeah. over. Sure. And I'm just waiting there. I'm like, I've made them do that many times. <laughs> <laughs> so my manager comes over and she's like, all right, what, 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 what seems to be the problem? And he's like, this young man is harassing me and disrespecting <laughs> me thinking I can't read a magazine. And I'm like, uh, no, he's just trying to get these like, Thirty dollar binders for fifty cents each, and I told him no. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so then he takes his whole binder with with my manager. They have a whole fight about it. They go over to the, like the return center, mm-hmm. and she has to speak to her supervisor. <laughs> it was a whole ordeal. Oh, wow. Um, it one of my worst experiences working retail, mm-hmm. and like it, there was more details mm-hmm. about like name calling and whatnot, yeah. but like I can't remember. Stuff that we're not going to say on air. We're, yeah, we're, it was. Yeah. It was yeah. man wow. retail. It'll it'll change you. Yeah. No, I, I worked uh, I worked at a bookstore for a while, and it was a, a bookster. bookster. I don't know why. Like, <laughs> I uh, yeah, I worked at a bookstore for a while, and there there are definitely you got some 
you have some interesting people, but like, you know, that bookstore even had like a, like a security guard, <laughs> like the walk around, <laughs> like an off duty cop would come and sign in on Friday nights to like, interesting. yeah, like, cause it was a, it was like a high traffic area. I mean, we like ran into like kids stealing all the time, but like, really? From yeah, bookstores? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they cause well, books? yeah, they also had things like, uh, like a drone and like I, some kids stole like a, uh, a seven by seven Rubik's cube one time, uh, like uh, manga <laughs> manga is another like high oh, target sure. thing where it's like, um, all right. Um, number three, <laughs> number three, we need more benefits from paying our taxes. Benefits from paying our taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Randy, I think you're just. Number three, the government needs to do better stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like, they need like, to step it up. Honestly, like they're kind of sucking lately. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, I like how your your number three on your list of top five things to fix America mm-hmm. is we should get, the government should do stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, that's... like I need more incentives than not going to jail for paying my taxes. Right, you know? the, the the entire U.S. the entire U.S. government. That's. I mean, I'm not here to not like, enough. It's not <laughs> enough. It's not enough. Everything that we get, like you know, all they, the laws, they should do better. Protection from being murdered. That's yeah. not. It seems like a pretty basic understanding of right. being a citizen. Yes, that's you protect me. That's what taxes are for, Randy. <laughs> the basics of citizenship. All I'm saying is, like, they could find money somewhere to like host a festival in every major city when it's tax day. But like you can't participate unless you paid your what taxes. What are you talking about? Like, cities have festivals all the time. I want one for paying my taxes. <laughs> Pay your taxes specifically, <laughs> specifically for paying my taxes. I get invited to a festival, and if you don't pay your taxes, you don't get invited. Randy, that's how every festival works. If you don't pay your taxes, you go to jail, and then you can't attend festivals. <laughs> All I'm saying is, I want my taxes to, to just matter. Oh, you want to party? You want to be celebrate? You want to pat on the back? You want yeah, to pat I do. You want, I do. Do you get a refund? <laughs> I did, I've, this is the first year I've gotten one. Yeah. Since... I normally don't either because I, I think I mess up how I do something. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think I'm just like overpaying in taxes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But... Well, continuing on that point, mm-hmm. if we're not at least going to like have a festival for the festival of... <laughs> Paying taxes and no, um, hold on. Is this the only thing you want? Is a festival for? I, I want. I, I want more incentives for paying my taxes. Like they should be like, Randy, good job. You contributed to America this year. Here is a party. We got lots of brats <laughs> and hot dogs. We got a fireworks show. We got a drone show. Those are more. I like that your idea of like the American government is. Would the American government be better if it was just like a barbecue? <laughs> like it's yeah. Just, like if you just chipped in and they just like they threw a party with that money. Yeah, that like, you're paying. like I would like my government to appreciate me sometimes. You know. Yeah. Like this seems like a pretty one sided relationship. You know, I give them all my money. The whole what do they do? Keep doing government stuff? Security? Like Yeah, but they don't like think about me. Protection? Like, like, I'm just a social security yeah. number to them. I, I will say I think about my government more than my government thinks about me. <laughs> I will be honest. Yeah. You know, I can conceptualize a government. A government can't conceptualize me. Yeah. It's, you know, that See, is I, true. I just want them to be more aware mm-hmm. that I'm here. Sure. You know? Yeah. It would be nice. <laughs> you just... You just want like a guy that's like the guy, the thank you for taxes guy. And I mean, just... can we have that be an elected position? Like, because I I'd care about that. Like, I'd want that guy to be friendly or girl doesn't have to be a guy. What if instead of people getting refunds, we had a party with that money? Hmm. <laughs> we budgeted towards the party planning committee. Hmm. I wouldn't be not down for it. But I wouldn't be down for it. Yeah. I just want them to manage the money they have better now. I just feel like you're like, all I want is for better government. <laughs> it's like not unpacking that concept at all. It's just like, <laughs> I wish things were better. <laughs> it could have been better. Like, government, it could be better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. And, uh, anyway, right. so expounding on this point, um, if they aren't going to do that, mm-hmm. I think we need to head in the opposite, opposite, opposite direction at least, 
and start teaching kids how to do taxes. Hmm. If not that, teaching kids how to evade taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were okay. That's the opposite of what I thought you were going to do yeah. there. You're so, right. There's probably plenty of uh, YouTube channels out there for how to pay your taxes. Yeah, none for none for none evasion. for evading. <laughs> So we could have we could have special guests like Al Capone oh. and Martha Stewart. Point four. Okay. Kids need a place to hang out. Oh yeah, yeah. The so whole circle thing back that around. You introduce this with. Yeah, circle yeah. back around here. It's um, not a callback if you just don't give information. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so since kids don't really have like places to like hang out these days, mm-hmm. I think. As long as you are under the age of 18 and like you probably got to be above the age of something and like there's more details to iron out because like I think they need like some kind of chaperoning. But kids should just be allowed to hang out wherever in like unrestricted zones that adults can't get to. So like (laughs) in an Oval Office, like the White House, like in surgery rooms, like how are are else the kids going to know if like they want to be a surgeon than watching a real life surgery. Mm, you know, like it's, it's interesting. <laughs> so, so just like, uh, let them go anywhere they want to go. Anywhere they want. And you're saying like a desert, like every space should have a designated space for kids. Is that That's my saying? next point. I haven't even said that yet. Wait, no, you said like, like a, like a place for them to hang, like they can hang out. Oh anywhere. no, they can just hang out so anywhere. Anywhere they can just go yeah. into that place. Yeah, in, in Hollywood, public, f- Hollywood like, film like sets, private places, but like public, public places. places. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes and no, because like I mean, I'd assume the Oval There's Office. Kids walking into your house, you're like, ah, I can't do anything about this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the Oval Office is a private residence, Randy. But I think it is because you can't mm-hmm. just go in there. They give tours. Yeah, but you can just go in. You have to get a right. tour. It's not that makes it private, right? I don't. This is the government. I don't think a government building can be private. Private means like owned by an individual. The government is not an individual. Huh. I don't know. I don't know either. Anyway, <laughs> we'll, ref- we'll rephrase that somehow. Of like, kids should be able to go wherever they want wherever and hang they out. Want. Hang like out. on the film of a Hollywood movie set. I am so against this. <laughs> like, I, I don't well, want children in places that are allowed now. I don't want children on airplanes even. <laughs> <laughs> like just hanging out in the cockpit of an airplane. Like, hey, what's this do? <laughs> this feels like a uh, like a movie that was uh, written by a thirteen year old who likes the skateboard. Like, man, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> If only I could do whatever I want, wherever. And then he I want runs it. into the president at McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "Bro, you should change the way <laughs> we have to hang out." And then he does a kickflip, but like you just got in background on the president where he like felt bad about yelling at his kids, and then he's just sitting there like, "I, I should, should change that. the way that things are." Done. <laughs> Again, it's the kids' interpretation of what the adult world is because the president just makes a law. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amen. Okay, so if they can't go wherever they want, we need a like kids zone in every public area. McDonald's play place. Yes, I literally have that written down. <laughs> a McDonald's play place in every public like, space. So like, how there's like a fire code of like your building must be built to these specifications. Yes, your building must include this many balls in its mandatory ball pit. <laughs> Is that what you're thinking? Yes, I hate this idea so much. <laughs> like. There are places there are places that sell tobacco and alcohol and I don't think kids should be allowed hmm. to those places. Man. Those are public public uh, I mean stores. we're going to have to put some kind of limit on it like like obviously if they can't drink yet they can't go to a bar. Mhm. So like, like how you say obviously, like obviously, obviously in this fantasy like, world I concocted. No one's going to take advantage of this. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Of course not, Randy. Like no just, one. Like I imagine, like my brain just keeps going. Like there should be no adults anywhere. My that instantly made me think of that. Did you see the Jimmy Neutron movie? I was kid? about to say yes! it. I was literally about to say, Randy, you created the plot of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wow, great minds, great minds. <sighs> Amen. Mm, okay. 
Who would have thought? All right, so are we, are we on the point five? Yes, point five. Point five. Point five. Um, so this is a little more serious of a point, but mm-hmm. also lighthearted. Um, campaign finance reform to reduce the influence of money in politics and ensure fair and free elections. Andy, this was point three of just fixed government. That's that just ties well, back into this. <laughs> I mean, but it's a it's a different point though. It's a different point. All right, all right. Point. So, um, I'm suggesting to reduce the influence of money in politics. Candidates should have to complete ridiculous challenges to win <laughs> donation money. Okay, I'm I'm in. <laughs> For example. They might have to eat 100 hot dogs in an hour, <laughs> perform a stand-up comedy routine for a panel of judges, and based on their score, they get X amount of campaign dollars. Yeah, yeah. All political donations would be thrown into a large lump sun, sun? Sun. sum and divvied sun. out <laughs> among the contestants mm-hmm. based on their performance and the ridiculous... <laughs> so you don't... Want- you don't choose which politics, which politician you're donating to. You're donating to the concept of politicians. Correct. Like, okay. That way we can't just be like, hey. I feel like this was an episode I of want... Doctor Who. <laughs> like, was it? I have never seen Doctor no, Who. No, like there's one where like there's a satellite where like everybody just lives in a reality show all the time. I'm like, mm. you know, I, uh, I, I appreciate the idea. I don't know if I want our government or are uh, politicians less focused on government mm. and <laughs> bettering the world than they are now? I think... I mean, like, you know, I, I, I don't want Joey Chestnut to just be able to come in and take the political world by storm. Think about, though, how many more allies the United States would have if we were more fun. <laughs> you know? You think that's our problem? We're not fun enough? We are not fun enough. I, like, we're a bunch of... Mm-hmm. Our government... Bunch of old geezers. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's true. They should, yeah. they should have an age maximum, man. Yeah. Nobody, don't trust anybody over 30. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, 35, is that the age of presidency? Or yeah, yeah, it should be the opposite. The, that should be the maximum age maximum. for president. <laughs> you have to get elected at like 25. Yes. To serve both yeah. terms. Yeah, that would be a lot more, uh, you know, if our, like... It makes me think of like any, like I keep going back to skateboarding today, but any movie where like uh, they would approve of adults cool, they're like wearing a skate, like uh, wearing like a helmet and knee pads while they're skating, and it's like politicians appealing to the youth. That's what I imagine. Hello, fellow youths. <laughs> a hot dog eating contest would be good. What other? What other? Did you have some other? other uh, the comedy routine. Comedy routine. <laughs> Competitive <Yeah>. comedy. Yeah. <laughs> What is competitive comedy? Look I mean, like? there's is just it... a panel of judges, and you got to make them laugh. So, okay, as soon as we introduce judges into this, then you are oh, introducing yeah. the door for so much mm. corruption. That's got to be like jury duty. Mm. If you if you get chosen to be a panel panel judge for the political stand up <laughs> stand up comedy, yeah, everybody has their own political biases still. So it's just gonna be like. It's just going to be, let's, you just created a system where fewer people are voting, Randy. <laughs> no, they're still voting. Like, it's just, it's just how campaign funds I are just distributed. I just love the idea, like, these four people, just chosen at random, get to decide where all the political money goes. Like, Yeah. Like, I, like <laughs> think about it. Because, like, like, we need more fun politicians. Like, someone who can crack a joke. You know, instead of just I mean, being like, uh, <laughs> we need more tariff shown China. You know, like, I uh, want somebody who's like, hey, good to see everyone. Here's what happened this week in presidency. You know, like, I mean, okay, uh, okay. Another way to do the political money. Mm-hmm. Um, candidates could, instead of traditional ad campaigns, do um, viral TikTok dances. <laughs> To get their messages across. Or they could do um, trying to convey political topics on TikTok doing solely emojis. (laughs) (laughs) So no smear campaigns. Just like Uh, what you stand for. 
but using only emojis. <laughs> uh, apple plus pie equals heart. It's American flag, bald eagle. <laughs> Fireworks. Uh, like dollar sign with an X over it. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like an, or like the, there's, a, there's like the circular. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. With like the, the There's got to be a name it. for that. Like the, the Ghostbusters, like the, the bust part of the Ghostbusters. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. You, you, you could get some pretty twisted political messages out of that. Mm-hmm. I feel like, though, like they don't want ambulance drivers anymore. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> we want to defund the ambulance. I, I could just like, see that. I'm like, you have to. <laughs> you can only get to the hospital if you could walk there. <laughs> oh, there's like an abandoned building. You, 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 could, you could get some political messages. Out of yeah, the all I'm saying Funding is... Funding for the arts, that's that's yeah. easy to represent. All I'm saying is there's 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 opportunity here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd agree with you. I would agree with you. Um, lastly... I'm still looking at an emoji. Oh, okay. Give me a minute. <laughs> this, is, okay. this is important. I, uh, I'm just curious. Starting now. your smear campaign now? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready to... Randy equals sad face. <laughs> Randy equals... Yeah. Pink fairy, <laughs> beluga oh. whale. <laughs> that the most nonsensical and insult. Uh, we'll oh, there's in. there's also a little literal Joker card. Randy, there's emoji of every nation's flag. This is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I forgot about that. Just like yeah. Um, last point on this point. Before people go to cast their votes for the election, mm-hmm. every participant must participate in the congressional roast (laughs) you have to like write in a funny joke (laughs) no no so like each candidate takes their turn roasting the the guy like a comedy roast can i tell you what i thought you meant yeah i thought you meant when you cast your vote at an election you have to write a joke in like (laughs) you have to come up with something you have to come up with a zinger ahead of time and bring it to the table that would be kind of funny I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Make politics more fun. Yeah, or America I, more I like fun. The idea. Not I, specifically politics. I feel like a lot of this is like, how can we make, how can we make politicians funny? <laughs> like, yeah. that's what you're aiming. It's for. like, how do how do I make life more enjoyable? Like, take something that really sucks right now and it's really polarizing. Make it fun. <laughs> make it fun. More more, more camaraderie. Make it as belittling as possible to yeah. the people involved. Like, yeah, if you're gonna be a public servant, yeah. man, get ready to get roasted. Yeah. I mean, they already do, but yeah. at least now it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's going to wrap us up this week for, hey, I saw that on the internet. Sure. Let me ask you this real quick, Randy. Yeah. Did you look at the camera once? Did you remember that we were on camera uh, I all? definitely remembered. I looked at it a couple times to make sure it was still recording, like that little yeah. red box right I there. I glanced over at it. But, but I like, was mostly looking at you, but I think that's yeah. going to look fine. We'll okay. see. Okay, we'll, we'll see how that, yeah. that looks. Anyway. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, rate, review, mm-hmm. all those wonderful things that people like to criticize on the internet. Mm-hmm. Remember, remember to do those. Also, tell us um, your current biggest quarrel, like problem in your life yeah. you want us to solve. We're going to do a segment on it when we get enough of them, and we'll solve your life problems. Yeah. So don't uh don't 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 add us with anything uh, too serious. <laughs> I will no, tell you. The are the no, better. please don't just like come at us with like oh something that we're like oh, I don't I don't know we don't something we don't have the tools to deal with. Like, I have no law advice. Anything that's like like there's you know if you need help we're not the people to talk to like don't don't bring us that. But um yeah we would we'd appreciate some. Some current fights, and we'll uh, we'll take a side. We will take a side yeah. and say who was right and who was wrong. Yeah. Um, we're going to end all of our podcasts with a segment called uh, Social Media Page of the Week. That's what a is this? Title. What is this uh, page this week? All right. The page this week is going to be on Facebook. So go to Facebook. We're going to put it in the link for the show notes. Uh, the photo, the, uh, the page is the same photo of Jeff Goldblum every day. Uh, the title's pretty self-explanatory, and it's brought me much joy over the years. It's uh, it's a uh, the same photo of Jeff Goldblum every, every day, every day. Yeah, yeah, that's that's all it is. Uh, it's it's it's. I forget that it, my Facebook doesn't show it to me long enough that I forget about it, and then I see it, and it makes me laugh. That's so amazing. Highly recommend it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Bye. Bye. We got away for a while, Randy. Bye. Bye. Bye.
give us some time to like click off our video so that the autoplay doesn't just bring hey into check out else. this next video yeah. right here yeah there's randy that's not a video that's a television i'm gonna channel. i'm gonna put the thumbnail of the next no, video right here we, we don't have any other videos though how's that gonna work Randy? the next time i have a video yeah, right. You're gonna, gonna go back. You're gonna, gonna remember go back. to do that. You're gonna remember. No, to do I that. probably <laughs> won't. Right? Okay. Here, here's here's something that Randy made in ten seconds on. Hey, I actually spent a lot of time on this, and it looks awful. <laughs> I kind of like it a little awful. I'm not gonna lie. That's what I'm most. All right, bye everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>